It's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you'll know real life. And to help you discover what that truly means, download our free app and you'll have immediate access to the real life television broadcasts, the daily real radio podcasts with Pastor Jack's teachings, words to the wise daily devotions, access to social connections with Pastor Jack through Facebook and YouTube, tools and resources to grow in Christ and much more. Download the app today for all your mobile devices. Go to reallifewithjackhibbs.org for more information. Why should I fellowship? Why should I pray? Why should I get involved? You know, these are all good questions that most believers have had at some point, or maybe even questions you have right now. In his series called Why Should I? Pastor Jack Hibbs explores the answers to these important questions. This complete 17-part series can now be yours on one MP3 CD. Get the answers to some good questions now. For your donation of any amount to real life, we'll send it right out to you. You can go to reallifewithjackhibbs.org or call us at 877-777-2346 or write P.O. Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Get the Why Should I series today. desire that through Jesus Christ you will know real life. Welcome to a special edition of Real Life with Jack Hibbs. I'm David Jay and we're glad you joined us today. Now normally Pastor Jack sits in the interviewer seat and does that job, but today that's my job. We're going to put Pastor Jack and his wife Lisa in the hot seat. Hello, Pastor Jack hey, and Lisa. Hi. It's hi. good to have you guys here today. Nice now to here. we're talking about marriage. Yeah. You guys have been married how many years? 35. Almost 35. And I want to get into the uh, 35 years. I want to get into a subject that gets a lot of people riled up the moment they hear it. And that is the roles of the husband and the roles, mm -hmm. although I should say the role of the husband, the role of the wife. But the verse that I want to, I want to, I want to sort of look at is the one that talks about wives. Yeah. Submit to your husbands. Right. I mean, does the media go nuts with this? Do people go crazy uh, these days when yeah. they hear that? But what I'd like to do through this program is define that. Yeah. What exactly does that mean? Yeah, it's great. And here's, uh, here's the big deal. This is what all of us, if you're a Christian or not, this is what everyone suffers from regarding what you just said. The culture is the lens that people are looking through when they read that portion of the Bible. Right. Well, for that matter, the entire Bible. But the culture says, submit, no way. Yeah. Husbands, they're bad. Wives, unfaithful. Forget about it. The whole thing's wrong. Who says? The culture says. So what we need to do is look at really the culture of the Bible. What was God saying to us? What is God saying to us? So we don't look at these words with a culture, 21st century uh, glasses on. We take those glasses off and we let God's word speak to us because I guarantee you, if a woman would embrace what God is saying here in the context, she would want this in her life. And if a man would obey what God is saying here, he would want this in his life. So what do you say, what do you say to the person that walks up to you and say, you Christian men are mean because you want m me as a wife to submit to another human being, and that's not right. Yeah, I'd come right back and say, look lady, it may be that you've had a very bad experience uh, through a man or you knew people who said they were Christians and they treated their wives like dirt. Mm -hmm. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about how God says you should treat your wife. And I want to tell you, lady or young lady, um, if you're loved like Jesus says for your husband to love you, the issue of submission won't even come up no because you'll be delighted to be in this married rela marriage relationship with this man. You will be absolutely excited about it and it won't be a battle. You will delight in submitting to him because you see that he is submitted to Jesus and that his greatest passion is that he wants to love you like Jesus loves you. And when a woman comes across a man like that, she won't let him go. Yeah. She just won't let him go. What is the biblical role? I'm going to ask you and I'm going to ask you, Lisa, what is the biblical role of a husband? The biblical role of a husband is to live out the model that Jesus Christ established for us in Ephesians chapter 5, which tells us that the husband is to be willing as head of the house, as head of the wife, listen to this, 
as head of the wife, the husband is to be willing and active at ministering to her like Jesus did. And it tells you right there clearly that you are to be willing to die. Frankly, Davy, it's drop dead. Yeah. The husband has got to be willing to drop dead in the daily affairs of life so that she is well taken care of, so that she's honored, so that she is the one that is being ministered to. Marriage is a ministry. Frankly, people who are not interested in ministering to others, their marriage isn't gonna work. Yeah. But if Jesus is our example, look, he's my, he's my uh, hero. He's my role model. I'm supposed to love Lisa and take care of her like he takes care of the church. And that is the role of the biblical husband is to love her like Jesus loves that man, loves that husband. What's the biblical role of a wife, Lisa? Well, there's a few contexts throughout the Bible, but if we're looking at Ephesians 5, she is to submit under you know that verse there. I like to go back a little bit further because those verses are to a Christian husband and wife. You uh, can't expect the world, if, right. if a woman who's not a Christian hears the word submit, I mean, she thinks we're crazy, yeah. how archaic. Yeah. This is ridiculous in this culture, you people are crazy. You know, you live in the dark ages, but uh, the word of God never changes, it's perfect, yeah. okay? So those things never change. We have to go back to the garden again, mm -hmm. because that's where Eve made her mistake. We were cursed with painful childbirth. Who knows? We would have maybe had children just pop out. It yeah. would have been glorious. No yeah. No but instead we have pain. We are to be underneath our husband at that point because of that curse back then, because we were the one who made, uh, Eve made that mistake back then. So we were kind of put under submission to our husband. It would be something that would be very difficult. Once again, just like childbirth is difficult, a woman submitting to her husband is not an easy thing to yeah. do. Nor is it uh, easy for the husband to always love the wife the way that he should and dwell with her with understanding because understanding a woman, and I am a woman, is very difficult because we're very complicated human beings. So of the two, I would say the woman is definitely the more complicated emotionally, uh, just in all kinds of ways. So it is, it is hard for a man to do something uh, for his wife in that regard too. But even if a woman is married to a non-Christian, in Peter it addresses that, that she is to, by her conduct, by the way she lives her life, if she's a Christian, he's not, she could actually win him mm -hmm. over to the Lord, how? Yeah. By her fearing of God, right. by the way she lives her life, not by coming home and preaching a sermon, right. but by living in such a way with a, a quiet and sweet spirit that yeah. she's submitting to the Lord, that God has done a work in her life. So that submission now in Ephesians 5 between a husband and wife is really no different. If I'm committed to the Lord, there may be times and there have been times where I disagreed with a decision or something. I ultimately, if I'm walking in the spirit, I'm gonna to submit to him anyways, even though it might be, okay, God, you know what? I don't think this is a good idea. I think there could be ramifications here, but God, he's yours. You have well, to deal with this. So you just have to let it go. We should let people know what that really looks like, what that really feels like, go because ahead. it almost sounds you know, mystical, yeah. but um, in a real practical way, it would be hypothetically like this. Um, uh, Jack might say, you know what? It's our day off, let's go to Santa Barbara today. And she might say, yeah, you know what, you're right. It is our day off, let's go to San Diego today. I mean, look where we live, we can do actually do sure. that. We're spoiled here. Yeah. The difference is, well, you know what, I, I wanna go to Santa Barbara. Well, she wants to go to San Diego. Um, if in that discussion, it comes down to where it almost gets to be heated about it. I, well, I haven't been there in so long or whatever it might be. We're both gonna argue our, our desires, right? Ultimately, it comes down to this, A, Lisa submits to me, meaning, you know what? And this is what it looks like. Hey, I tell you what, we can go to San Diego some other time. We'll do Santa Barbara. And um, look, you're, it, it, it's your decision. Uh, we'll, we'll go, we'll go. Or B, it could be, hey, you, you know what, Lisa? I wanna go to Santa Barbara, but you wanna go to San Diego? And um, we can do Santa Barbara some other time. Sure. And so you wanna go to San Diego? We'll go to San Diego. Now, all of a sudden, in an, that's a real, that actually is what happens with us. Okay. But in a real environment, instantly we now know, well, by her yielding or by me yielding, because remember Ephesians 5.22 says both of us yeah. are to submit to the Lord first before anybody submits to anybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So all of a sudden now it's like, okay, well, we're going to go to San Diego and um, I'm going to have a good attitude about it. 
I'm going to have a good, I'm not going to, if we miss a turn off or if it rains on us, I'm not going to say, I told you. Yeah, and that's a decision you have to make. It's a decision yeah. you have to make because yeah. love should be the criteria. Love should be the driving motive behind it all. And this, it's not a hill to die on. Yeah. It's not a hill to die on. And so this is the give and take of marriage. This is the honoring and the, and the uh, submission. And, and I want to add this. Lisa and I were talking about this before where somebody might say, well, you know, a woman really has it tough. She's got to submit to a husband. Well, listen, a husband has it equally rough. And here's, here's what's often misunderstood. Yeah, the wife's supposed to submit to the husband. But the husband, it's required of the husband to love the wife. And that's not easy. Yeah. I'm going to admit. The way admit, that Christ loves the church. Yeah, the, the way that Christ loves the church. I'm <laughs> mm -hmm. going to admit this for every man right now. Um, it's not normal for a man to love his wife. It's normal for the man to love himself. Yeah, fair enough. It's mm -hmm. normal for the man to sit there and watch the game all day or to do what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. It's not normal for a man to look into the better interest of his wife. And so there's this thing about submission and love. It's equal. It's how much are you willing to die to your own desires mm -hmm. where, where marriage becomes the ministry that God intended it. Again, I've said this before, but marriage exists to make us holy people, right. not happy people. Yeah. Not, that we, not that we should be unhappy. Yeah. There's happiness and obedience, but marriage is to make us holy. Notice, it's easy to be single. It's easy to live an isolated life. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's altogether different to pick up someone else's underwear or straighten up someone else's toothpaste on the counter. That's ministry. I have a dear friend of mine, he's 82 years old-ish, and he said something to me the other day, and I've heard it before, but for some reason, when he said it, it made perfect sense. And the question that I have for you is, is this, or can this be, biblically based? And that is, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> is that biblically based? It's I mean, it, it, it's, it's a carnal way of saying it, but no, is it biblically based? Actually, it's 100% biblically based. Because again, Ephesians chapter 5 says, if you love yourself, mister, love your wife. Yeah. Because, meaning... If you want a life that is productive and happy and not contentious and joyful, take care of your wife. And the environment will be one that is, you know, propagating a beautiful environment, a happy home. So that's absolutely true. You know, there's but the old the saying, if, if mom is not happy, ain't nobody yes, happy. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of truth <laughs> yeah. to that. I mean, we make fun of it, but it's, it's real. But then there's that response, too, of the wife, that she not be the spoiled little princess or queen, and everybody's supposed to do everything right. for her. There's that response that she is the helpmate, that she is the one. Uh, there are many verses that talk about in Titus and about the older women teaching the younger women to, te uh, to teach those women how mm -hmm. to be obedient to their husbands, to love them, to love their children. You know, how many, that, that's even a funny thing that it's in there, love, your, love their children. Because you would think as a mother, of course you're going to love your children. Yeah. But love them how? How do you help them? How do you work with them? How do you train them? How do you, so the older women teaching the younger women how mm. to be homemakers, how to bless their home, not to be bitter and angry and um, causing strife in the home. Because there is elements of the little sayings you guys just said. Yeah. Because she does in uh, run the home and the attitude is there in Proverbs. It talks about uh, a good godly woman has the law of kindness mm. on her lips. So she's talking nicely and sweetly, which then uh, influences the children and the husband and the home. And so even if she's married to a fool, Nabal, uh, the story of Nat, uh, Abigail and yeah, Nabal, yeah. that she was married to a fool, but uh -huh. she was still a gracious, kind, loving woman. God blessed her. Later, she was married to King David. I'm sure that marriage was probably a lot happier, but she was a great helpmate to her husband. Whether that was a fool or a king, she uh, took that hmm. place. So, interesting. Yeah. You know, it's interesting what Lisa's saying right now because it, I'm just now reminded of a conversation I had the other day with my daughter where we were watching this, uh, this comedian, and he was very funny. Yeah. And, and so then they showed a clip of his wife, and she was very attractive. He's not so attractive. And I said, oh, she's attractive. Yeah. And he's not so attractive. And my daughter said, Dad, nice and funny uh, gets a lot of mileage. And so if you looked at it on the worldly plane, you wouldn't have put his looks together with her looks. Right. But what you do put together is he's a nice guy and he's kind. And here's a woman who understands that. Well, again, that's almost a carnal view of it in a mm -hmm. way. But Lisa just talked about being nice, being respectable, being, being courteous and loving. You think about that's a decision you make. 
And as husband and wife, it shouldn't be, hey, you need to love me like Jesus loves the church or you need to submit like the church does. The it should be, you know what, if we love each other, uh, that's going to be seen in how we deal with one another because we love Jesus more. Mm -hmm. We love Jesus the most. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the power that I have to love Lisa is if I love Jesus more, that gives me the strength. He's my number one. Think of it. But, but I want to go back to, and I totally agree, that before these verses about husband, love your wife, right. women submit, wives submit, before that, a few verses earlier, is be filled with the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That's the key. That's yeah. the I can't right. submit to him, nor can he love me right. the way that we, the way Christ loves the church. Mm -hmm. You know, every man just kind of shudders. Every woman kind of shudders with the whole submission thing. But when you're self. filled with the Spirit, you're submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. You're doing it for him. You're yeah. asking him to give you exactly. that empowerment yeah. to do a very spiritual, awesome thing that goes back to the beginning of time yeah. with Adam and Eve. It's beautiful. Yeah. And nothing has changed. Nothing well, is to change. Because even in Ephesians later, it talks about how children obey yeah. your parents and how servants are to be with their masters and how employees are to be with their employers. It's the same submission level, yeah, but we uh, you know, freak out yeah. when it's in a marriage context. Yeah. So. I, 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 many years ago, in, in a uh, former life of mine, <laughs> I, I was uh, an actor in a movie, a couple of them. And <laughs> at one point, I was giving some advice to this married couple. It was romantic comedy. I was sitting there, and we were eating dinner, and I, was, I had a little southern accent at the time. I said, you just got to remember one thing. There's another person there. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, when yeah. I saw the movie, when yeah. I saw the final cut, I went, that's profound. Yeah, that's true. That's it profound. Is true. I mean, I, I was being funny at the time, yeah. but it, it really is yes. profound. Yeah. There's another person there. That's, that's key, right. Davey, what you just said, because again, uh, one of the motives for us to do this program today is to reach the younger generation who's given up on marriage and they're falling for a satanic lie, in my opinion, to, to not embrace marriage. When you start thinking about that there's, there is no other person there, it's all about me. Mm. When you go down that path, it's, it's self-destructive. God has engineered it to be destructive because Interesting. our relationship with God is all about others. Right. And He's all about others. Yeah. And so all of a sudden we come along and say, it's, no, it's about me. You're going to find yourself lonely. You're going to find yourself aged, a fruitless life. You're going to find yourself alone looking around wondering, what did I do with my life? Because you thought at the time, um, gee, it's all about me. It turns out that it's really not about you and you have squandered time. And that's something you'll never get back. And I'm afraid that a lot of people are going to be waking up in their 40s and 50s yeah. without a relationship that honors God. And look, personally, I believe I know so much more about God through marriage, through children, through Isn't grandparenting. True? Isn't that true? Yeah. yeah. And so um, really people need to trust God and get away from their emotionally based theology and get back to biblically based theology. And for crying out loud, you know, if you're 20, I don't know, I have to say 20, 21 when we started, but you know, if you're 25 years of age and, you're, and you, you, you haven't figured it out yet, uh, you need to go out with somebody. You need to go out, go to church, find another Christian, go on a date at that age. You can actually yeah. go out and find out. You know, a, lot of, a lot of women today tell us, tell Lisa and I, oh, men won't ask us out or they're afraid or whatever. Guys need to trust the Lord. They need to obey God. And if they're interested in a young woman at church, they need to start showing uh, overtures of, of, in, of, of thought. Hey, would you like to go out? Would you like to sign up for this, this ministry? Let's want to do something together. Come on, guys, pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. Because you'll sit back and second guess forever and you'll wake up and you'll be 50 years yeah. old alone. Yeah. And that's not, what, that's not God's plan. I have a, an interesting uh, observation when you said, uh, uh, when you just talked about uh, selfishness. And it is, it's easy to be selfish. Yeah. Yeah. Selfish is, yeah. it, it's our that's nature. Right. There's that's nothing right. to it. Right. Why, it, it, this is interesting. When there's somebody staying at my house, uh, for instance, a, a company comes over, uh, it stays the night. I'm very, very conscious about doors shutting. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and extra noise and this and that. Mm -hmm. yes. But when it's just me and oh, my wife, gosh. I'm not so much concerned about the door shutting <laughs> right. noise. You know, why is that? I mean, is, that, is there anything, what would you say to that? I think that's ministry. I think it's service. You care, you don't want to wake that person up. Yeah. You want to honor them. They're in your home. You want to, you want to give them a nice time and you want to, 
communicate to them that you care. So you've even, not only will you do that, Davey, or not do that, depends on what it is, but you will you might even have breakfast ready before they come out down the hallway. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't I do that for my wife, exactly, though? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, that's I exactly mean, I what I do, I, but I'm saying, well, what, would, what would cause me to well, be so selfish? I think Ask like, Lisa who brings her coffee in the mornings, you see. No, he brings to me. Yeah, I, I, don't, I yeah. heard that, actually. Oh, okay, I heard yeah. that. It, we were, we were chit-chatting uh, a few weeks <laughs> he, ago. He even insisted I get a little bell so I can ring it. Oh, you shouldn't tell people that. A okay. little bell? Okay, then she has a awesome. She has a bell that we got, like a hotel bell. Yeah. Yeah, one of those little... And ding. this is stuff that nobody should know. I love it. Like, <laughs> and I'll be out reading my Bible or gardening or something sure. in the mor early morning, and I'll hear this ding, ding. <laughs> and that means coffee, please. Coffee time. Now, people who are watching this are going to be saying, that's it, I'm done with them. Those people are yeah, sick. But really sick. You know what? After 35 years, it's it's like, hey, this is kind of cool. I want to make her coffee. Yeah, she he likes insists my coffee. on it. He gets upset if I try to make the coffee. Maybe because I don't make it as good. But yeah, I, I totally know what you're saying. I think as time goes on, we let our guard down yeah because at first you know I mean we're little liars let's face it when we're dating sure we got everything's perfect yeah. and the guy may have borrowed 20 bucks to take the girl out because he didn't have any money or he didn't have a job mm -hmm. and I remember when we first uh, were dating he he had ordered a car but he didn't have a car uh, I was making so money he was borrowing a during car the time I ordered the so car. I remember when he was coming over my mother said um, doesn't he have a car you know, it was kind of like, I go, well, he ordered one and it was like months, you know, it took months for it to come. To be made. And um, so it seemed like, you know, <laughs> almost like he was lying, but he wasn't. I mean, he had ordered had this car, <laughs> but it's true. We got our best on. And then as time goes on, it kind of wears thin and then we get more lackadaisical. Uh, and then we can't figure out why we don't have all those feelings. If well, we you know work cool. on, that's where I'm back to the work part. If we work on being that's when you know, we have your guests in the home mm. you're being special you're you're in tune with their needs or yeah, what their interrupt. uh what their needs what are, whatever it is that they're they're you know you're anticipating their needs i want to interrupt this thing because we just made fun of the bell deal yeah this is very cool people need to know this for their lives not for us but 35 years of marriage and still to this day, and it's always been this way. If Lisa knows I'm coming home, she will straighten herself up. She'll still refresh her makeup or put on lipstick or, or whatever it is, still to this day. She did that when we were dating. Yeah. She did that on her first day of marriage. She's done it ever since for 35 years, which is awesome. You think about that. You say, why don't we do that anymore? You know what, At, well, as soon as you said that, I remembered what she does daily for me. Mm -hmm. And you might say, well, that's that's a little thing. You know what? It's the little things. Little things are that's huge. Right. That communicate yeah. miles. Little things Straightening are Straightening the home before they come home or whatever. There were toys all over. Yeah. I always had the kids kind of pick up a little hair, bit. Her hair's been up in curlers or whatever. It's never. Address for me the people that are sitting there looking at the TV right now saying, oh, you people are so archaic. You're so behind the times. Yeah. yeah. Talk to those people for me. Yeah, I, I, I actually I am a little archaic. I love looking at old. Uh, I like the old movies. I like the way yeah. men and women treated each other with respect. Right. I mean, it used to be that if a woman walked in the room, the men all stood up. Yes. You know, simple little things. Yeah. They called each other Mr. and Mrs. by their last name or whatever. There were just so many common decencies that we've gone so far the other way. There's no respect for anybody. Well, and, and, and I'd like to add this. It's easy to take a cheap punch from an uninformed position. Meaning Fair this. Enough. Meaning this. I remember being young and, and thinking, those people are so out of step. They're so out of date. Mm -hmm. I'm judging them from my un, uh, zero experience yeah, world. Right, right. And what we want to say today is, you know what, just because something is old doesn't mean it's bad. Mm -hmm. The earth is old and it ain't bad. Mm -hmm. The universe, the moon, last time I looked last night, it's old. This it is really bad. old. This book is eternally <laughs> old and it ain't bad. Right. Listen, the culture might do it some good to go back to what is, like the scripture says, ancient boundaries. Mm -hmm. The ancient pillars. Because there's a reason why something's old and it probably means it's weathered storms. Address the folks that are looking at the TV right now, mm -hmm. saying, these people are kind of crazy. Well, I don't even know what to do with that. <laughs> yeah, Charles Spurt said, if we weren't a little bit crazy, we'd all go nuts. <laughs> Isn't that a great line? Yeah. So, no, I'm kidding. But um, listen, you can either choose to do your life the way that you decide to do it, and the Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, and that way ends in death, or you can do God's way. And Lisa and I, our struggle is 
when we don't do well together as a couple, it's because we're one of us or both of us are doing it our way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It never goes well when we're doing it our way. It always goes perfectly fine when we're doing it God's way. And that's what we want you to know about regarding this program. And so uh, regarding every show that we bring to you, we hope, as always, that it's through Jesus Christ that you would know real life. And that's our desire. And that's why we want to be candid and open with these programs. So if you're getting anything out of these shows together, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to get some feedback from you. So until next time, God bless you guys. And we'll be right here again at Real Life. Why should I fellowship? Why should I pray? Why should I get involved? You know, these are all good questions that most believers have had at some point, or maybe even questions you have right now. In his series called, Why Should I?, Pastor Jack Hibbs explores the answers to these important questions. This complete 17-part series can now be yours on one MP3 CD. Get the answers to some good questions now. For your donation of any amount to Real Life, we'll send it right out to you. You can go to reallifewithjackhibbs.org or call us at 877-777-2346 or write P.O. Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Get the Why Should I series today. Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history, which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who is searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life each month with a gift of your choosing. In return, our gift to you for becoming a Real Life partner, we'd like to send you this Worldview DVD. It's titled, What You Believe Defines You. Call now, 1-877-777-2346. That's 877-777-2346. Or by mail, P.O. Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Or simply go to reallifewithjackhibbs.org. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life.